Brian English, forum named Hyperbytes, and I'm going to do something a little more unusual, shall we say, for my normal tutorials. We're going to actually look at a specific uh, hosting service. A few people mentioned this now on the forum, so I took a look and it looks very, very interesting. I've actually have registered one account. The service seemed to work very well. So this is a host called Orange Host. Why have I singled them out specifically for uh, a video? Well, if I look at view plans, what you'll see is that they have a plan that actually starts at $1 per month and that supports Node. Python, Ruby, Git, um, unlimited email, unlimited, unbeated bandwidth, uh, free SSL. It really does tick all the boxes that you uh, might want if you want to jump into the world of Node. They do various packages. They've got the uh, Micro, Mini, Small, Platinum, lots and lots of different variations on it. They also do a reseller hosting, which is very, very cost effective. You see they're starting at $19 a month for 25 accounts, right up to uh, $118 a month for 150 cPanel accounts, um, which is incredibly cheap, compared, certainly compared with the English service that I use. This is US-based, um, so that might be a, a good or a bad, depending where you are. And of course, they do domain registration as well. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at um, creating an account, basically, registering a domain, and then we go right through the process, right through to we've set up databases, we've set up our FTP, and we have deployed a node site to that service. I'm going to make a start. I'm going to go into buy now for the micro service. I'm going to do it annually. I'm going to choose a domain. I'm going to register this one because I can wind up a few friends who will think that it's AOL. Um, Twenty dollars for two years because it's a core UK account, so that's pretty competitive. It's a touch more than I currently pay on my. Um, current provider and that's going to bring my bill up to 45 um, but then we obviously we have a discount on there they've discounted that by $11 so I'm going to pay $34 for a year's hosting with node supported and uh, that includes the uh, domain so I'm going to say that I am a self because I'm not working anymore. So I don't have a company ID. My name is Brian English. Yeah, and I don't want to be in who is. Not interested in web builder. I'm not interested in dedicated IP. So I'm going to check out Brian at hyperbytes.co.uk password okay and I'm going to pay by PayPal I've got my 1140 discount there so I should now just be able to hopefully click check out and that will take me to my PayPal account. So there we go. Going off to PayPal. Now, see now on screen, it says the payment process has been completed. But in order to process the order, we've got to complete the profile and billing information for the account. Click here to do here for that. So we click here. It's going to ask for some personal information here. I'm in the UK. I'm actually going to put a fake number in here, if you don't mind. Um, let me 
which is an old mobile of mine, uh, my billing address. The reason why I picked PayPal is I'm actually going to use an old address here. Just don't want the world knowing where I live. Um, this is my old office address. Obviously, I can update it later. If I could spell. Excuse me on this. I'm in the UK. That address was in Northumberland. Payment method, PayPal, default billing address, above, we should get away with that. Save changes. And that's all changed nicely. So, we can now look, we've got user management at the moment. Just got the one user. I've got my payment methods set no, no there are no credit cards have added at this time we have the option to add some contacts in there obviously i don't need that account security we have single sign-on availability as well and we've got an email history well we haven't even looked at the emails as yet so we go back to our dashboard we can see now that everything appears to be set up as it should be and uh, we just need now to wait for those um, DNS records to replicate so we can um, use the domain so I'll have to post things here right now I'll be back soon though. so we've uh, jumped forward um, about 24 hours um, it took that domain about 18 hours to go active uh, here in the UK so I assume that that would be about the same for the, those in Europe um, perhaps uh, in the US it would be a little bit quicker but yeah don't don't get impatient it does take a while for the um, DNS replication to take place the quote 24 hours so 18 hours really can't complain about that um, so let's have a look and see what we um, do to get node up and running on Wapler so you see here we have the options and manage to log into cPanel, log into webmail or just manage it. I'll just quickly show manage is a, basically a cPanel subset really. Um, gives you a few quick shortcuts and to be honest most of the stuff that we want to do um, we could have done from there. Um, I'm going to go into the full cPanel. Let's close these down. Um, right, so where are we? We've got A1 Core UK, it's got its IP address. Um, let's do the first thing, I suppose, and check on uh, our SSL status. Now, what I notice is these servers install that automatically as opposed to having to manually do it. Um, but if they aren't, then you just need to run auto SSL and it will add those certificates to your domain. So what we need to do, let's, let's look at first uh, FTP. Now those of you who are familiar with cPanel will probably or may well use the, your standard login details for your hosting package to, so I'm just having a bit of trouble finding where the, they've hidden FTP there yeah you'll use the standard um, login details that you got for your domain as your FTP login it doesn't seem to work properly um, on these servers I think it's perhaps a mapping issue so a couple of issues I found regarding mapping where they haven't quite got it right for node presumably because most of their users are perhaps PHP users so you would normally have you've got your special FTP account there and they say issues around using that so I'm just going to create a new one I'm just going to create that as Brian day one co UK give it a password close that 
clumsy fingers again. I would normally have just had viewed that, but I don't want to show what I'm typing in. And very important, get rid of that directory bit out of the FTP because we wanted to point at the root. That's actually pointing at an FTP root and it will uh, stop your server working with Node. So there we are. We delete that. You can set quarters if you want. Um, and let's just create that FTP account. You see there, they have the configuration options for um, using different cl clients as well. Um, but that is basically all we need to do at this stage. You can change quota there, by the way, as well, if you want. So that's our FTP account created. What else do we need to do? Well, we need to... Um, create a database we need to give access to that database and uh, that should be about it other than a few little important tweaks that we do later so what I'm going to call a database I'm just going to call it um, my test good grief DB there we are that is created. We now need to add a user. I'm just going to make that Brian. Password. Create that user. And then we can then now, when I remember how to do it, we can add the um, privileges. I'm just going to allocate all privileges. So let's make those changes. So that's our database created. There's the privileges created. Um, so that basically is all we need for the, uh, the basic Wappler. Um, access but to be able to do the direct access to allow us to access it through the DB manager we need to do one extra thing we need to set remote SQL so at the moment it's set so obviously it has access from the uh, IP address of your server now if you have a fixed IP address great just add that in to your list here if you've got a dynamic IP address if you can uh, remember to do it Every time your IP address rotates, you're going to have to um, add that IP address in. All I'm going to do for this is we're going to, I'm just going to add a wildcard in, which basically means um, allow access from any IP address. Not the most secure way of doing it, I've got to say. I know a lot of people out there do. Um, my recommendation would be if you're going to do that, take it out after you've done your Wappler development process. <coughs> excuse me so there we are sometimes it takes a little bit of time for that to uh, to go active uh, depends on the replication processes of your server so I think we're about there now um, and the other thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into um, file manager so I need to just get back in that C panel I'm going to go into file manager and we're going to create the directory in which I'm going to put the node application. So I'm going to select folder, I'm going to create it off the root and I'm going to use node.js JS app. That's the um, demo directory that is in the how to create uh, a node server on cPanel tutorial that um, PS Web did. It can be any name that you want. Um, but I've just got the habit of using that all the time now. So there we are. We have that created. We've got our 
uh, directory created and now that will be used when we finally do deploy and run our JS app. So what we're going to do now, I think I'm just going to make sure that I've done everything. An easy way of doing that is let's just create a new project. Create our whoop, directory using oh, let's use a Wapler local server. We're running Node.js. Allow it to add any components that are required. Let's just save that. Let's go back now into our project settings. I like to just get this done straight away. Public assets uploads. So we've got our folder that doesn't get overwritten when we do a deploy. Give that a save so we'll check our frameworks are there. Um, so let's go over to targets and we can see our targets there. Let's just add a database to it. Let's add uh, my DB dot SQLite three. Okay, so we'll just test the connection there, make sure that's okay. There we are. So we've got a very basic development server. Now I'm going to quickly create a production server. So what's our URL? Of course, it's HTTPS, whoops. Really having a bad typing day today, even worse than normal. Four slash four slash um, a01.co.uk. Nice simple f that FTP. FTP server is going to be as standard on these servers it is ftp dot and then the domain name port is optional port 21 we're going to set the remote directory is that directory that we've just created in file manager node.js app um, our login user is going to be password let's do a test on that looking good excellent so now we have our FTP connection set up as we would require it so what else we've got to do we've got to add our database so I'm selecting custom it's a MySQL database now well, there's a little bit of a quirk here with these servers and I think again it's down to mapping I've tried putting the host as the IP address doesn't seem to like it tried putting local host doesn't seem to like it but if you put the host name in then that works absolutely fine so if we remind ourselves of our settings that we had in the database, because I can't remember them off the top of my head. We'll see our database is that. And our account user is that. So back into Wapler, um, database user. A O C O U K under dash Brian password uh, 
and we can now save that oh, sorry port generally omitted but it will be port 336 sorry 3306 and there we are we have that user query we can cre cre check those database connections now by check adding uh, by going into sorry production and we see there that we have access to those tables so we know our FTP is working correctly we know our database is working correctly um, we're well on the way to completion here now so I'm just going to do uh, a very basic page here row column heading Hello, Wapplers. Save that. Right, what do we need to do now? Well, I'm just going to uh, do a publish. Now, it's a little bit concerning. We've uh, seem to have lost the database connection there. Now we were uh, absolutely fine in the online version, but we seem to have an issue in our development version. Let's have a quick look in there. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so project options saved. What are we going to do now? Let's get ourselves back into Arch Host. Because, of course, what we haven't done yet is create our um, node application that's to run on the server. So we go back into our cPanel. And we go down to set up Node.js app. What we'll see if we set it, click on that is we need to tell it what the start file is, the location, the root, the, the and the start file. We don't have that start file uploaded yet. Um, so what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to do a publish to our production server. Um, even though it's not actually running WAPLA yet. So I'll just open that. Let's do a publish. Um, publish. Publish is complete. So we've got all the files that we need. Most importantly, that index.js file, um, which is effectively the um, node server. So if I now go into our control panel, I can scroll down to set up a node.js app. create application first of all that's for the application root and we use the directory that we created now notice I haven't put a forward slash in there I think that this host just or the cPanel just gets this mapping slightly wrong normally I would be putting a forward slash in there the application URL is your domain that's not a problem and our startup file is index.js I've just realized I need to set our node version I've set that to node 18 we're actually in the production environment here um, we'll restart that app all looks good so let's save It'll get there eventually there we are application is saved now I'm just going to show you what happens if you run npm install because this again this is I think down to just some mappings not quite right if I run npm install what we'll actually do is we 
generally on, certainly in the past when I've tried this, I've got an error. Just give it a few seconds. It's, it's got to obviously generate the error and get back to us. Um, and again, this think this error is all down to this uh, mapping of directories. Taking a little while, we'll get there eventually, honestly. Um, might have to do a little edit here. No, it's worked this time. Last time I did that, I actually had to force a four slash into there to make it work. Everything's worked fine. Just bear in mind, if you do get an error there, try just adding its four slash in there temporarily. Run npm install. You can take it out after that. So that now should be then our applica node application running. And we, with a bit of luck, will be able to view our node page on our server. So let's hit open in browser. There you are. Lo and behold, hello, Wapplers. We have a working node server. Before I sign off, I just want to show you a little quirk in relation to NPM installs. Um, again, it's a path issue with this uh, host where you you can't run NPM without prefix in our control panel. Um, now, as we know, occasionally you have to drop into uh, terminal and be able to install things manually uh, when you're in an old environment. So uh, what I'm going to do is just look and see how that would work um, when I find where terminal is on this control panel. Give me one moment. Somebody's stolen it. There we are. So we're in the terminal. After warning, it's going to give us our terminal screen. I'm going to try just see an NPM npm install and you see that we get a error saying that npm is not found now it's not that it isn't there it's just unfortunately the path to npm is not properly set on these servers we go to file manager and if i look in node v env node version environment i presume that stands for we'll find the node.js app application and then we can see that obviously I've some point I really zero I created a, a node 10 and node 18 bin and there is our npm there so what we do need to do is to give it its full path um, I'll just drag that off screen let's go back into our terminal now what we can say is we can go into that full path, which is node v e n v stroke no, node js app stroke our node version that we're running at bin slash npm. Let's give it something to do. Now you'll see that that will now run correctly because we've given it the full path to the npm file. There we are, it installs what it needs to do. So that's just a little quirk of these servers. Um, npm isn't mapped properly, but it's very, very easy to resolve that just by giving it the full path. So that's the end of this tutorial for the moment. If I find any other little quirks, idiosyncrasies, uh, strengths, weaknesses, I'll add them to the um, tutorial list. Um, but for the moment, I hope you've enjoyed seeing how you can use Orange Host to create a node-based server for not quite the $1 a month that they claim, but certainly under $2 a month, which is incredibly cheap. Um, so thanks for joining me and uh, hope you'll join me next time I do a tutorial.